through your word and we, we analyze the things that you have uh, pointed out to us so that we can walk in freedom and walk in uh, your ways and be led by your spirit. So Lord, we ask that your anointing be upon your word tonight, as always, upon your servant. And Lord, let me speak only the words that you would have spoken to our hearts and to our minds, Lord, as we apply it to benefit Oh, God, the growth that we need every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's read the scripture first. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. So my question in interacting with you today is this. When you walk through a valley, especially when it says this one, when I walk through the darkest valley, there are emotions and feelings that crop up. I don't care who you are. You can be the, you can be uh, I W Shambot. I don't care. You can be, you know, one of the greatest preachers in the world. But when you're walking through that valley of the shadow of death, let me tell you something. There are feelings and emotions that come up and rise up. What do you think some of the emotions would rise up? walking through a dark valley all by yourself, no one around, just you in the, in the midst of darkness, okay? In the midst of real darkness, okay? And yet you're walking through that darkness. You don't have a flashlight. You don't have a, a phone light. You don't have any kind of light whatsoever. You're just going through this valley, okay, which is between two mountains, which also hides a lot of light from the sky. And here you are in this valley all alone walking through this valley. And isn't that sometimes how we feel in life? We feel like, like in life sometimes we're walking all alone. and No one really understands us. No one really cares. Uh, but that's not true because people do care. But we feel that way sometimes. And when we walk through that valley of shadow of death, so my question to you this, uh, this evening is, what are some of the emotions that you can imagine if it was you walking through that darkness? And I just want you to sh just, just yell it out and we'll talk about it. Fear. That's the big one, is fear. Because you don't know what's ahead of you. See, as people, we become so secure in our little cubicles of comfort zone. We become so comfortable in, in that we only go to that comfort zone level, and then we don't want to get out of that level. And if we do, we're nervous or we're scared because we don't know how it's going to be on that other side. And so we have this little protective wall around us that we only go so far. But fear is one of the greatest things that will actually paralyze you. Uh, it's also one of the greatest enemies of faith. If you have fear, you're not going to move out. It's, it's like, um, it's like uh, uh, the, uh, the guy that was uh, stepping uh, 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 up in a tree. He was up in a tree, and the Lord said, I'm here to save you. He said, just take a step forward. He said, but Lord, there's nothing there. He said, well, just trust me, you know. And uh, he wouldn't do it because he said there's nothing there. Because he was looking at what he, he was going by, what he could see, not according to faith. And you say, well, yeah, but that's got a lot to play with gravity and science and everything. Yeah, but so did Peter when he walked on water. So when God gives the command or God gives the word to come like he did to Peter, that was divine permission to overcome the very creation he created and to also overcome or be an overcomer of the natural existence of things. And that's why Peter could walk on the water. He couldn't just get up out of the boat anytime he felt like it and just walk on the water because he would have sank like a rock. In fact, right in the middle of all of that, he looked at the waves and, and thought, wow, this is impossible. And he started to go down. So one of the greatest things is fear. And I like the... Uh, the acronym of fear, F-E-A-R, um, uh, false evidence appearing real. Okay. It seems like it's real. It seems like, you know, wow, I'm walking through this valley. I'm walking through this thing in my life. But God, you know, I'm fearful. And I think part of the victory of overcoming that fear is being, number one, to face the fear. And number two is to know that you're not walking through the valley alone. You're not alone. So no matter what you go through in life, 
if you take these principles and you apply them to your life and you know, and you and it's not about feeling, oh, I, I, I feel, I got this feeling. Oh, no, it's by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things. Finish it. Not seen. It's not with the natural eye. If you don't understand it, uh, when, when we first started to work here, you know, we started in my living room. We, we never saw all of this. This never was in our minds. We just said, we're going to start here. And before you know it, one person came, another person came, then another person came. And then we, we moved down to a little uh, video store that they let us use. And uh, see, those are the early days where a lot of you weren't here. Okay? But we went in the wintertime, and it was 50 degrees in that place. And we sat there with our coats on. And we, we praised the Lord. And we did the whole service like we have today. We did the whole service, huh, honey? And we did the whole service. Those are the things we sacrificed to get where we are today. You'll never get anywhere. If we would have looked at that and said, my God, this is a failure. Forget it. This is a valley, man. We're, we're, we're just going to give up. No. We just keep pressing on. You just keep going through. So what are some of the other feelings? And we're going to talk about fear a little bit later. But what are, what are some of the other feelings you might feel walking through this darkest valley all by yourself? Loneliness. How many have ever felt lonely in here? How many have ever been in a room full of people and you still were lonely? <laughs> okay. Why? Because it's one of the strongest emotions of when you're feeling alone, but you're not alone. So here's where faith comes in. Here's where faith comes in. Faith comes in and says, I am not alone because God is with me. Feelings is, I'm alone, there's no one with me. Okay. No one's called me, no one's come to visit me, no one's sent me a letter. <laughs> okay. Why is that? Because if you look at this scripture, there's one, one personal pronoun in, in the singular. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is that? When I, even when I, not we, not us, even when I walk through the darkest valley. You're going to walk through some valleys. You're going to walk through some dark valleys. Even as a Christian, what you do and how you, you apply the word of God in your life is going to determine whether or not you're going to be emotional and you're going to go wandering back and forth, back and forth with your feelings and your emotions, you know. And a lot of people, are, are, unfortunately, are like that today. A lot of people today, is they, they, on Sunday morning, they'll wake up and if they don't feel like coming to church, guess what? They don't come to church. And it's not about feel. See, this is what happens when we get into the realm of emotions and feelings. We let our emotions and feelings dictate to us. But we don't allow faith to, uh, to, uh, to dictate to us. Now, I think it was the first Sunday that um, Bishop was here. Okay? And uh, I was looking around, seeing who was coming, and, also, and I was like, oh, man, Joe's missing out. He's not here. Okay? Now, he was home, okay? and he had all these things coming at him, which I didn't know it. But he had all these things coming at him, and he was running late, 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 and he's never that late. Okay. Fifth, ten minutes maybe, but half, 20 minutes, half an hour, eh, he's never been that late, I don't think. Okay. So I was like, oh, man, he's missing out. But he made a determination. See, it would have been very easy for his feelings to kick in and say, well, I missed a half an hour already. Why bother? But he didn't. He said, no, devil, I'm going anyway. And he got here late. Now, that's not an excuse for everybody coming late, please. Okay? See, that's the feelings and emotions people play with. You know what I mean? That's not saying that you come in late anytime you want to. But what I'm saying is he was determined to get here. Okay? He walked through that valley that he was facing. He didn't let the emotions and the feelings dictate to him, okay, that, no, I'm going to stay home. He came anyway. 
because he overcame those feelings and emotions. I'm sure you probably thought some of those thoughts, too. Okay? But he pressed through that. Every time you do that, every time you press through something that you're going through, okay, it makes you stronger in faith. You know, he says you've been given the, the, the seed of faith, the, the little mustard seed of faith. But he said, don't let it stay a mustard seed. Let it grow till it becomes a tree where the birds can come in and nest in it. So it's not about keeping that mustard seed faith. It's by planting that seed in every occasion in your life, letting that seed be planted and saying, you know what? I'm walking by faith, not by sight. So I'm going. And because he did that, that seed now is planted, and it's going to grow. He's going to go, wow. And he was blessed, right? We were blessed by Brother and Pastor, you know, Bishop Andrews being here. There's an impartation that takes place when we, when we bring these speakers in for your benefit. And so he planted spiritually into your lives. But because you took that step of faith and you came, guess what? It's going to grow. And that's how it is. Now, the Bible says whatsoever a man sows, he what? He reaps. So if he would have sowed, guess what? Oh, I think I'm going to stay home. Guess what? That seed would have been planted even for another time if something else came up. And as he kept negatively applying that seed and in in, in going in that direction of his emotions and feelings, that's why some people are so emotional. And they're not spiritual. But they're emotional. They can jump the highest in the church. They can scream the loudest. But say one thing to them that they, you know, that, oh, man, they get upset. That's it. I'm leaving the church. But what about the 99 good things? See, immediately, emotions, feelings, they dictate. But what about the 99 things that were done good? So you have to look and walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? Praise the Lord. And though I walk through the darkest valley, what else? Okay, so we have, we've had fear, we had loneliness. What's something else? Loneliness, fear, yes. Anxiousness, being anxious. I wonder what's out there. Oh, no. Can I go forward? Is there a wild animal out there? I know if I if I take another step forward, I'm going to get eaten. Something's going to happen. You know, you start worrying because anxiousness is worry. You start worrying. Worrying is a sin, by the way, because you're not trusting God. Okay, we're going to look at a few scriptures tonight. Matthew six thirty four. We'll start with that one. So don't worry about tomorrow. Now Jesus is saying this, right? This is in the book of Matthew. And he's telling the disciples and the people that are listening to him preaching the word. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Why do you think he said that? Does, does anyone have an idea of why he would say he would say that? Hmm? Okay, that's that's true. But why was he telling them that? Yes, because they were worrying about tomorrow. <laughs> that's why he was telling them, don't worry about he's not just speaking things just to speak it. He's speaking into people's lives, and he's telling them, look, guys, don't worry about tomorrow. I preached the message a few weeks ago. God's got this. Why, why, do you, why worry about it? What good is it? Why be anxious about it? And you start getting stressful, and you start getting headaches, and you start getting sweats, and you start getting nervous, and all of those feelings and emotions start coming out. So what? I tell you, you, ain't done with today yet. It could be a lot of more stuff coming down the pike today. <laughs> no, don't worry. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Okay. 
These things are going to come your way. He even said, look, today's trouble is enough for today. Okay? So don't worry about tomorrow. That's not, I'm not telling you not to plan. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying about as far as the emotional aspect of it, don't begin worrying about tomorrow when you've still got to finish out today. You know, don't be like that guy, you know, he, he woke up and he found out the electricity went off. He looks at the clock. He's already an hour late. He gets up and he showers and everything, gets ready. And, he, and he's talking to himself. And he goes, oh, my God, I'm going to be late. And he says, I hope the traffic's not bad. He goes down the highway. Guess what? Bumper to bumper. All right, now I'm going to be really late. Oh, man. And I just started this job. My boss is going to fire me if I go in. Why should I even go in? You know, he starts going down that road, right? And then when he gets to work, he finds out that a lot of people were in the same condition. And so that it wasn't something he was making up or a lie. And he didn't lose his job. You know, and he had a deadline, and guess what? Things got on hold because of the situation. You can't control everything. Hello? You can't control everything. And some people, they like to control things. My wife's like, yep. That's why I'm making hot dogs tonight. I told her, get out of the kitchen. Leave me alone. She's over my shoulder. Wait, 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 where's the onions? I'm like, get out. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Anxiety will kill you. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Psalm 94, verse 19. <laughs> Psalm 94, verse 19. Uh, try, try NIV for me. Yes, that's it. When anxiety was great within me, When anxiety was great in me. And I tell you, as a Christian, you're going to face times of anxiety. You're not exempt from it. Right? How many here are living in a human body? Okay. Okay. You're going to experience pressures and anxiety is going to come your way. Okay. What does it say? How do we get out of it? How do we apply the word of God? It says, your consolation brought joy to my soul. What's your soul? Your mind, your will, your intellect, all of those areas of thinking, the process of thinking. Your consolation. How does he console us? Hmm? Yes, through the Holy Spirit. He is the comforter. And you need to talk to him. We have God the Father, God the Son. Don't forget the Holy Ghost. He's with you. The Holy Spirit, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Sometimes people feel uncomfortable with ghosts. Okay. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit, talk to him. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And, he, and then Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another comforter. And he will be with you and shall be in you. And because he's in you, you don't have to be lonely. Because he's in you. It's not a thing, it's not an it, it's a person. That person, by his spirit, is in you. In your spirit. The Bible says, his spirit and your spirit bear witness that we are saved. We are saved. He says, when anxiety was great, and of course, David, I mean, you know, he went through some real anxious times. I mean, he had King Saul chasing him, trying to kill him. He was the next king of Israel. He was already ordained as king of Israel, okay? 
He was supposed to be on the throne, and here he is on the run, hiding in caves, because Saul was after him to kill him. Not only that, but there was a time when his own son, Absalom, wanted to abduct the throne and wanted to kill his own father. Think about the emotions and the feelings he went through. You had a son, and your, your son was out to kill you because he wanted your throne. How could he do this to me? You know, I, I, I gave that boy everything, you know? I mean, come on. You know, I, I, gave, him, I gave him the best, you know, uh, Michael Jordan sneakers. And, you know, I gave him all that stuff that he wanted, and, and I bought him a motorbike and all that stuff. And, you know, everything he wanted, I gave to him, and now he wants to kill me. Think of those emotions and feelings he went through. And he writes this, he goes, when anxiety was great. Do you think he knows what he's talking about? Absolutely. The Holy Spirit instructed him to write about this for your benefit, for my benefit. When anxiety was great. Think of the pressure. Think of that pressure. You're in the hills hiding in the cave. And you, at night you had to leave to go to another cave because they found out where you were and they were going to attack you in the morning. So you had to sneak out and hide. And... It's not a fun thing. But he says, your consolation, your consoling me brought joy to my soul. Wow. Does God's joy bring consolation to you? You know, when you go through the deepest, darkest times in your life and you just look and you say, God, where are you? And he says, I'm right here. Yeah, but I don't feel you. It's not about feeling. It's about faith. Yeah, but I don't feel you, Lord. You don't have to feel him. But he's with you. He's not a man that he should lie. So either his word is true, and he says, I'm with you. Always. Say the word always. And then he said, even to the ends of the earth. Have we come to the ends of the earth yet? No, so he's with you. But that powerful emotion of feeling I promise Tom I won't sing the song. Because <laughs> what happens is it just keeps going through his head. <laughs> the song. <laughs> oh, let, and he just did it. <laughs> but understand that his consolation, his consoling, brings you joy to your soul when you need it. When you go through the darkest, most horrendous time in your life, that's the time you need to turn to God and say, God, Holy Spirit, I need your consolation. And I need that so it will bring me my joy to my soul. You know, we used to sing that song, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Okay. Well, that's where it is. But Jesus said, the joy that I give is not like the world gives. You know, For my joy shall be in you. What the Holy Spirit does through consolation and through, through uh, consoling is to ignite that joy again, to bring out that joy again to the Lord. You know, David, David prayed something like that, you know, about the joy of the Lord. You know, I forget what scripture it was, but it just popped in my head when he would pray. And he, he says, but the joy of, you know, of the Lord is my strength. When your anxiety was great within me, when, my, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. First uh, Peter 5, 6, 7 in the NIV also. Hey, nobody brought me water. Humble yourself. The first attitude 
that you and I have to take in approaching God is what? Humility. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, our authority, that he may what? He may lift you up. Okay? He may lift. Humbleness is the first thing of recognizing. You know, some people, they get proudful and they think, well, I'm going to get out of this thing. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up myself and I'm going to do that. And that lasts for about 10, 15. But he says, humble yourself. That's the first key to humility. Under God's mighty hand, his authority, that he may lift you up immediately. Is that what it says? What does it say? Why doesn't he do it immediately? Why? Why won't he do it immediately? What? Is time's perfect? Yes. We have to learn through the process. Not out of the process, but through the process of whatever situation we find ourselves in. He says, he will lift you up in due time. The word do means that he's waiting for your response. When you come to the place and you say, Lord, I cannot do this. This is too great for me. But Lord, I lay it at your feet. How many times, how many times we've done that and God's just moved? Can I tell you a little story that happened to me? I think I told you this years ago. This has got to be at least 10, 15 years ago. It's got to be maybe longer. Yeah, it's going to be longer than that. Because when we first moved in, we had two floors. We had the first floor, my father lived in. We lived on the second floor. That has to be more than that. We had this Mr. Coffee Maker. Okay, You could put it on the, on the counter, or you could put it underneath the cabinet. Okay? And uh, do you remember that story? And so I took the, I said, you know, we're tired of having it on the counter and losing counter space, so I said, I'm going to put it underneath the cabinet. Now, I'm not a very handy type person. Linda will tell you that right off the bat. I'm not like Tommy. He's ace. He aces that stuff. But me, I'm not like that. So I got the thing, right? I got the template out. And I'm, I drilled the, the holes. Okay? I put the coffee maker up, put the first nut in, you know, screws up great, you know. The second hole's not fit. I'm like, what is going on? Why is this thing fitting? I got the template and everything. I'm doing the same holes. In. Wouldn't go. Would not go for nothing. I worked like 25 minutes on it. Okay. And then right at the end of myself, <laughs> I dropped my drill and I dropped everything down. I said, God, forgive me. Your word says in all of my ways to acknowledge you. I said, Lord, I can't do this. I need you. Picked up the drill, went, <laughs> put the screw in, <laughs> tied it up, it was done. That's what God was teaching me something. When we ask Him, we call upon Him for help. He's going to help us in due time. I had to go through that 20 minutes of agony, okay, till I came to the end of myself. Because my pride was saying, I'm going to get this thing if it kills me. I couldn't get it. It wouldn't work. Next verse. Cast. Now, you fishermen know about casting, right? <clears throat> I've never seen a fisherman cast three feet from the shore where he's at. Okay, I've never seen that. They never cast three feet. No, they take that thing, right? They, they cast that thing, and you hear the reel go, right? And that's what God says. Cast all your anxiety 
find him anywhere. Can I tell you, he's the greatest life coach. I mean, he's taught not. If you ever have a real stressful mental breakdown, go spend your money on a psychiatrist or a referral system. Go to the best one of all. He's the greatest one. Go to him. Cast all of your anxiety, your worry, the stress of anxiety, all of those feelings, all those emotions, those crippling things that you go through, it cripples you emotionally. Give it to him. He said, cast it. Ooh, cast it out. Get rid of it. Cast it on him. Why? Yes. Because he cares for you. If you're going through a stressful situation, and all of a sudden there's a knock on your door, right? And I, and I say I was there, and I came and I said, Jeanette, give me all your stress. Give me all your anxiety. I'm taking it from you. And then I take it all. Well, how are you going to feel? I know you're going to feel good. But how are you going to feel toward me? Grateful. You're going to love me more. You're going to say, wow, can you come over again? You know, I'm not worrying about tomorrow, but I might face something tomorrow. Can you come by tomorrow? <laughs> Get some of this anxiety, right? Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. No, he cares for that other guy. He doesn't care for you. Yeah, he does. He does. He cares about you. Yeah, that people who cares about you. Yeah, but you don't feel like it. Walk by faith, not by, by what you feel. It's not by what you feel. When you get anxious, there's a chemical release called cortisol. And it causes a flight of a fight response. Did you know there's a third? There's fight and there's flight. This freeze. Don't know what to do. Don't know where to go. Sometimes people that have anxiety attacks or panic attacks, and they're driving their car, they have to pull over. They freeze. He says, Cast all that on him because he cares for you. You don't have to let those things get out of control in your life to that point. Now, what happens is some of us have been Christians for a year, two years, five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty years, whatever. but you've lived a long time. And you develop habitual patterns of decision making on how you feel. Case in point, work hard all week, Saturday. Of course, you're, you're in that regiment. You wake up at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning, whatever it is. But it's a Saturday, you're not working. 7 o'clock, I feel like chasing. Right? Some of you don't get up till 10. That's okay. We all go through the feelings and emotions. What happens, though, when anxiety and stress are not dealt with, well, how do you deal with it? Go running. Go walking. Exercise. Do something. Okay. Go for a walk and talk with the Lord. Okay. Amen. Because what happens is if you don't deal with the anxiety and the stress, and you just keep taking it and 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 taking it, it leads to depression. And depression is 
bad. Well, I'm glad you're a demolition expert. Thank you. Next time I need a building to fall down, I'll call you. <laughs> Can lead to an explosion. That's true. You, you can be explosive. Okay. You notice people like that too, where they hold everything in. They never retaliate. They never say anything. They're the nicest. You know. You say, oh man, that guy's got well balanced. You know, he just holds everything in, and, and you, you can insult him, slap him, whatever. And but there comes a time when it reaches the top, and when it does, and he unleashes, man. Woo wee. That's yeah, called passive aggressive, right? Boy, does he blow up. And he does things he would not normally do and gets himself into trouble and sometimes even into jail. Hello? There are a lot of people that may not go to a physical attack, but they go to an emotional attack. They get hurt in a, in a relationship I'll never love again. No one's ever going to hurt me again. Then what happens is when that, that different phobias start coming in and different panic attacks come in, there's also uh, what's called a social depression or a so social anxiety where being around people, you don't want to be around people anymore. You want to just be isolated. You want to be by yourself. And the reason is that's not dealing with the issues. You have to deal with those issues. Hello. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Second Timothy one seven. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear. But a spirit of what? Of love and self-discipline. Put that in the King James. I like it a little bit better in the King James. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. I want to talk about another person in the Bible who had emotional problems, psychological problems. Big psychological problem. <clears throat> See a lot of it happening with young people today. The man that was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsem um, when Jesus came over, he was one that lived in the tombs, was naked, ripping his clothes off all the time. You see that sometimes people do that. They rip their clothes off all the time. Cutting themselves. Self-loathing. Real psychological problems. Okay? If we, if we in our mindset today, and Jesus was alive today, we would tell Jesus, send him, send him to a psychologist. He needs a psychologist. He needs to get on meds. But what did Jesus do? He cast out the demons in the first century. And I love this, this scripture. And it says, the man was sitting next to him in his right mind. In his right mind. So these demon spirits can cause psychological problems. Not all. I'm not saying all, so don't go crazy on me. I'm not saying all. But there's a percentage people with psychological problems and they're inhabited by demons. My question, they say, well, I don't believe that. That was in biblical days. So my question to you is, those demons that were in that man that caused a, caused a psychological problem, do you think they died? <laughs> they're still alive. They're eternal. So they were cast out. Where'd they go? Oh, I think they went in my neighborhood. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know so-and-so, maybe they went over there. <laughs> but what's the one thing 
And I think you said it first, is fear. Fear. That's why it's so important, I, and I stress this, it's so important as Christians to be emotionally stable as a Christian is to get that word of God inside of you. If you don't have that word inside of you, then there's nothing of a reservoir for the Holy Spirit to use. Can I tell you the Holy Spirit doesn't help lazy people? What you put in will come out. What you put in will come out. You sow to the flesh, you reap to the flesh. You sow to the Spirit, you reap of the Spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Afraid. So if God's not given us a spirit of fear, then when you're, and I've been saying this to this church for a while now, you need to seek God for your gifts. What gift God has for you. I'm talking about 1 Corinthians 13. I'm not talking about a gift of flying an airplane. <laughs> you know, I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. Those are talents. That's not gifts. God gives a gift of music or, or gifts in, the, in 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, I believe it is. Ask God, what is your gift? Is it the gift of, of prophecy? Gift of healing? Gift of administration? Whatever it may be. And then begin to walk that gift out. You've got to walk it out. You just, it, it, if it just, you know, like the Bible says, stir up the gift that was given unto you through the laying on of hands. You've got to stir it up. You've got to say, okay, God, use me. How, you know, I love doing this. And I love it when God does it. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. When you pray and you ask God, God, set up divine appointments. You know, I was talking to Lisa, texting with Lisa. Oh, well, we were talking. I think we were talking. And you said, man, everybody comes and brings me their problems. Why do you think that happens? Because you're pretty? No. You are pretty, but that doesn't mean that. Why do they do that? Because there's something, there's something inside of you that says that person can help me. Now, until you open your mouth and it goes contrary to what they want to do, that's when they get all crazy. But they know who to call. Right? They, they know who to come to. As soon as something happens. But God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but power, the authority. Deal with those issues because we're not moved by fear. I'll never forget this. I think I shared this a long time ago, but I'll share it again because it's been so many years. Uh, we had a friend called Joe Galigo. If you're watching Joe up there in Colorado, God bless you. He used to drive the bus. So when I first got saved, I used to go on the bus with a couple of Christians and we pass out tracks. He was, he was a Christian, so he let us do that, which was cool. You know? So I remember one time, I uh, got on the bus, and we went a little ways, and the bus stopped, put some people on, and there was this guy. Uh, he was like a motorcycle guy, and I guess his motorcycle broke down, so he had to take the bus. And I'm telling you, he, his head was here, and I'm here. Arms like this, sticking out, short sleeve shirt. I can still see him today. Uh, leather, leather, um, um, not the jacket, but the vest. The leather vest with the chain, the whole butt, you know, the motorcycle gang members and all that stuff. So he comes in. I'm sitting like here. I don't remember exactly where I was sitting. I'm sitting here. It's like he's sitting there. The Holy Spirit said, give him a track. 
Now, my flesh was like, I ain't giving him a try. And I'm going to give him a try. He could care less about God. And this is the stuff that goes through. See, you have to be careful because the enemy can speak too, you know? And I'm saying, then fear came on me, you know? What if? Ah, that's okay, God. You know, you, you know when God's really dealing with you and you, you just have to give up? <laughs> so I gave up, right? And I stood up there and I said, uh, excuse me, sir. He says, yeah? I said, I want to give you this. What's that? It's a track. A track about what? It's about Jesus, about being born again. He said, you one of them born again Christians? I said, yes, sir. He said, my girlfriend just left me because she became a born again Christian. We were sleeping together and having sex, and now we, she comes and tells me we can't have sex no more. And you are a born again Christian? <laughs> but I prayed. He took the track. Well, maybe God's trying to tell you. I said, it's not about you. It's not that she doesn't care about you. It's not that she, she doesn't want to be with you. But she just can't be and have, have the same convictions anymore because now she belongs to God. And she, she probably still would love to have you come and be a part of God's kingdom, get saved and get married, whatever, you know. But the moment we have fear, that can stop you. Don't, don't stop. I had one guy on the bus one time. He, you know, I gave him a track. I said, you have a nice day. And he says, suppose I don't want to have a nice day. I said to him, well, have any kind of day you want. <laughs> what can I tell you? You want to have a good day. But don't let fear stop you. But you have power. And of love. And of a sound mind. Do you have a sound mind? Do you think clearly? You make decisions not based on your emotional feelings. How your emotions are out of whack. That's why they say if you're ever in a real traumatic situation, don't make any big decisions. Because you're going to walk and make decisions by your emotions. Find out with, with um, impatience, right? If, if you are in a situation where people are impatient, and they get frustrated, they get aggravated, you can make emotional decisions. Okay, like the two ladies that were on, I think, 195 or 95, whatever it was, or 93 up in Boston area. Right in the middle of the highway, I guess she cut her off. She jammed on this brake. They both got a car and started fighting right there on the highway. Okay? Why? Would they normally do that every day? No. But because of their emotions and their feelings, they didn't take the low road. They took the, I'm not budging, and I'm not budging. And before you know it, bing, bang, boom, one's not patient. Can I tell you something? God's delivered me from stuff like that. I don't get the long lines anymore. I'm so happy about that. You know, that may be nothing to you, but that's a great thing for me. You know, I mean, I've been going to different places now, and when I step up and I, there's two or three people ahead of me and stuff like that, and there's only two people, I, another person comes over. Before, it was they take one away. <laughs> Now I'm getting blessed because God's saying, now you're learning to let patience have its perfect work in you. The only trouble I have still is a little bit, with a little bit of impatience is driving. Because I don't, I don't understand how God could allow so many idiots on the road. <laughs> okay. I still have a problem with that. Pray for me on that. Will you? I don't cuss or swear or anything. I, I really don't. But I talk to them. Are you stupid? I can't.
can't believe you're driving like that. No, but whatever you're going to do. God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Is this helping somebody? I hope so. Psalm 115, verse 11. Could you put that in the NLT for me? All you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. When there's an absence of fearing the Lord, there's an absence of trust. Because what is the fear of the Lord? It's the beginning of wisdom. But the fear of the Lord is rever- it's not a scared, like I'm scared of God, you know. But the fear of the Lord is a reverence for who God is. I think it's Stephen Shannon. I think is that is that his name, Pastor Tom? That, that book on the attributes of God. Stephen Shannon. You read some of his books. I'm telling you, it, it makes you like wonder and awe of God. When he starts describing the attributes of God and stuff, it's like, wow. You just stand. I do anyway. I stand amazed when I read that stuff. It's like, wow, God, the immensity of God hundreds and billions of galaxies they say that are out there and all of the stars that are out there in in those galaxies and the Bible says he knows every star by name. Wow. You're talking innumerable stars. Each one has a name. And he knows every one. All the oceans only go so far. Isn't that something? They only go so far. The Bible says the reason why it does that is because God spoke it. This far and only. Now when storms come, okay, God allows the storm to go beyond the boundaries. But he says, all you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. If you fear the Lord, you're going to trust the Lord. So the moment anxiety, right? Philippians 4, 6, please. But before you go, let me just read the rest of this. Trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. What does the shield do? Protects. Protects you. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Put it in the um, NIV. I think that says, don't be anxious. I'm going through my translation. You know, you know what I mean? Sound like the Godfather. Huh? How am I trying to, am I trying to turn it in? I don't know. <laughs> Do not be anxious about anything. What does do not mean? Don't! I love that little counseling session by Bob Newhart. I don't know if you ever saw that. Okay? If you never saw that, go on YouTube and type in uh, Bob Newhart. Stop it. Okay? And this girl goes for counseling, and she's neurotic. Okay? And she's, she's, she has a fear of being buried alive in a box. And he, she tells him that, and he goes, stop it. Stop it. Do not be anxious about anything. Stop it. God's not going to tell you to do something that you don't have the ability to do, unless it's something supernatural. You're going to trust him to do it. But he's telling you here, do not be anxious about anything. Sister's gonna do my sister. Oh, my sister, what's she gonna do? Oh, 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 I'm gonna worry about my sister. Oh, she said she's gonna do this. Oh, she, what, 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 what. 
Don't be anxious about anything. Amen. That joy of consolation, the consolation of the Lord. The consoling of the Lord brings joy to your soul. Remember the message. God's got this. Do not be anxious about anything. Anxious is anxious is worry, stress, anxiety. You know people like that, they like to give you stress, anxiety. Can I tell you, avoid them. <laughs> I tell you, there was somebody in my life gave me a lot of anxiety and stress when I was a first Christian. I wouldn't even let them in my car. True story. Wouldn't take them to church. I told the pastor, I said, I'm not taking them. He said, well, if you don't take them, i, I got to get another ride. I said, well, you have to get another ride then. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy was, this guy was, oof. Okay? And two months went by or three months went by. I don't remember exactly. It was quite a while. And the Lord said, I want you to start giving so-and-so a ride to church. I said, I ain't giving you a ride to church. Oh, I know. You don't talk to God like that, though, do you? I remember I was only a year and a half old in the Lord, too. I mean, I'm not giving that guy a ride to church. The Holy Spirit said, no, you don't give him a ride to church. I said, why should I give him a ride to church? He said, because you're not loving him with your, with your, you're not loving him right. I said, what do you mean I'm not loving him right? Because you're loving him with your love. You're not loving him with my love. My love is unconditional. Your love is conditional. Get out of my car. <laughs> And I was getting anxious. I mean, I was getting upset. You know, I was getting, I mean, I understand. <laughs> so I said, okay, Lord. All right. So I called the pastor up. I told him, hey, listen, I'm, is it all right if I pick you up? He said, yeah, I said, that's good. I didn't have a ride this Sunday. I said, okay. And then he said, well, what about so-and-so? Counting to 10 doesn't work. Let me tell you that. Just saying. Okay. So I said, sure, he can come. So I drive, I drive there, and I'm happy because I'm starting to feel the joy of the Lord. You know, I'm like, okay, I'm doing what you said, Lord. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the bigger man. I'm gonna do, go do this. And I pull up in the, the house. Pastor gets in the back seat. He gets in the back seat. He starts to bite off the back seat. I'm driving. I'm getting that feeling. <laughs> and it's not a Toyota feeling. And he kept going on and digging and on and digging and on and digging. Finally, I said, okay. I pulled the car over. I stopped. I put it in park. And I turned around. And I said, listen. I said, I want to tell you something. And he's looking at me like this. I said, I don't care what you do to me. I don't care what you say to me. I'm going to love you with God's love. And so it ain't going to bother me. Put the car back in drive and never did it again. Do not be anxious about anything. How do we deal with it? But in everything. What's that in? Everything. That in everything means all of that stuff that's getting you anxious. All that stuff that gets you anxious. But in everything. That gets you anxious. Deal with it by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Are you nuts? <laughs> with thanksgiving? In everything that makes me anxious, I've got to be thankful for it? Yes, because he that hath begun a good work in you shall complete it. And he'll do it his way, not your way or my way. And sometimes he uses these difficult, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. And because you are walking through in everything that's causing your anxiousness, 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. I read that scripture to you, right? About the consolation and the joy of the Lord. The Lord will console you and will release the joy of the Lord. That's what you're thankful for. God, I'm not thankful, okay, that this guy burnt my house down. Okay? I'm not thankful for that guy, but I'm thankful, Lord, that nobody was hurt. I'm thankful, Lord, that through this somehow you're trying to show me something. Maybe my heart's been on the things and treasures of this world. Maybe I've been storing up treasures on this earth and not up in heaven. But in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I remember one time I got into a car accident. I, went, I had pizza on the, on the seat. I was going to visit some friends. And this drunk driver hit me right in the rear end. My father's Impala, 72 Impala I had. I had that car. Knocked that pizza right on the floor. And at first, the first reaction, well, the first response, I should then the first reaction was, what is wrong with this idiot? But then I got out of the car and I felt bad for him. And I got out and I was like, Lord, I don't understand. But I needed money to go to school. <laughs> and guess where my tuition came from? The insurance company. <laughs> so I just put the pizza back up in the box and nobody knew the difference anyway and he ate it. But with thanksgiving, present your request to God. God, I don't understand this situation. God, why am I in this situation? But God, I trust you because you know everything. And because you know everything, you know the beginning of this thing I'm going through, you know the middle where I'm at right now, and you know the end. And God, I'm here with you, and you're here with me, and I'm walking hand in hand with you. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear no evil because thy rod and thy staff, your correction and your guidance, direct me. And that's trust. So be anxious for nothing. Amen? Do you have some anxiousness? Do you have some anxiety in your life? And you want to get rid of it? in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving don't forget that part present your request to God you don't have to walk that anxiety alone that's why you have your brothers and sisters too in church it's so important to come to the altar because you can come to the altar. You say, well, I'll sit in my seat. God can do it here. Yeah, well, okay, good for you. But when you come to the altar, someone may move out from the assembly to come right next to you and lay their hands on you and pray and give you the exact word that you need at that exact moment in time. How many times has that happened to you? You've been at this altar and someone's come, laid their hand on you, prayed exactly. And they didn't know anything about your situation or your circumstances. But you knew exactly what to say. That's why it's so important. I got some more scriptures about to put out. It's almost 30. Can you believe it already? I'm fine to have it. So don't be anxious. If you're anxious, if you feel any anxiousness about it, Anything that's going on in your life right now, I just want you to stand for a moment. Maybe it's, maybe it's something in your life you're going through. Just stand. And God bless you. One of the big things is kids. Wow. So what do you need to do? prayer. Thanksgiving. That's what I want you to do right now. I just
I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your hands to the Father. I say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now so that I can come through you to the Father. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this thing that I'm going through. That I know, Lord, even though I walk through the valley, I will not be in a because you're with me. You're with me through the storm. You're with me through the unknown. I don't know how it's all going to turn out, but you do. And I'm choosing to be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, I'm making this request to you, Lord. Let me not lose my joy in all of the things that I'm facing. Let me not lose my joy that you have imparted into me, that you have given me by your spirit. Let not my emotions and my feelings take over and stifle that and grieve that expression. Help me, Lord, to look through the eyeglasses of faith when I face these situations and circumstances in my life. Help me not to have any grievances or any ill feelings toward even those that may have caused this anxiety or stress. And I cast it all upon you because you care for me. You told me to cast all of my anxiety on you for you care for me. And I do that right now. All the anxiety that I'm feeling and have felt, God, I just give it over to you. I lift it up to you and I say, God, here it is. You take it. Because you care for me. You love me. And I thank you for it. And I love you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning.